welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. Lasers were invented and scientists immediately fell in love. When the first ruby laser was demonstrated in 1960, no one could believe how amazing these things were. Scientists, engineers, and everyone involved with or interested in technology were enthralled with lasers. But for a while, they also had trouble figuring out any practical use for them. Lasers are quantum mechanics in action, plain as day for the naked eye to see. All those weird theories made undeniable. But at first, people just oohed and odd for years before they figured out how to put lasers into action. It's hard to imagine that today when there are components in virtually every electronic device. Cheap diode lasers cost only a few pennies and can be found even in cat toys. Lasers are so inexpensive and common, they've become disposable. Versions in the range of milliwatt or small fraction of a watt have made into laser pointers and vending machine toys. Military grade lasers typically deliver a million or 10 to the sixth watts or megawatts. Beyond even these state-of-the-art weapons, there are world record lab prototypes producing petawatts of power. That's 10 to the 15th or 10 million billion watts. The term just sounds ridiculous and beyond what even a physicist can imagine properly. These new petawatt lasers are so energetic, they create conditions similar to black holes. From laser pointers to directed energy weapons, all that's different is the power or wattage. Lasers are everywhere now. Since the 60s, more than 55,000 patents involving the laser have been granted in just the United States alone. From solid state to chemical, from milliwatt to megawatt, all the way to petawatt. Lasers that will slice through steel, shoot down hypersonic missiles, to lasers that could slice through reality itself. So what makes these things so special? What makes a laser different from a regular flashlight? Laser is actually an acronym for how they work. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Radiation just means light. The whole goal of stimulated emission is to produce light that has a certain special quality. This property, called coherence, is a fixed relationship in the phase or timing of waves or photons in a light beam. Coherent light is an alignment in the electromagnetic waves. Light itself is made up of ripples of electric field with a shadowing magnetic field hurtling through empty space. Light and sound are different kinds of waves, but they have similarities. Imagine the sound of a huge crowd of 10,000 people all clapping in applause. This is a mental exercise I like to do occasionally. Try to imagine the hissing dull roar of all the thousands of separate claps. This is like a regular incoherent light beam produced from a standard flashlight. Now imagine perfect organization of the claps so they were simultaneous and rhythmically coordinated. Smack, 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 smack. The bursts of pressure waves all on top of one another, working together to make the pulsing sound even more intense. That's like a laser. The laser concept was based on a suggestion made by Albert Einstein in 1916 that atoms could release excess energy during quantum mechanical transitions under the proper circumstances and with the right stimulation. A laser is all about the power, from milliwatts to megawatts all the way to petawatts. The average laser pointer is in the range of just a few milliwatts. A milliwatt is a small fraction of a single watt of power. Even at this low power, the beam from a laser pointer can travel for several miles before diminishing. By the time a laser achieves one watt, the light beam is capable of slicing right through paper. At 10 watts, thick sheets of plastic and wood can be cut with little effort. Just for some perspective on the difference between coherent laser light and normal incoherent light, 
A typical flashlight operates at 35 watts. If this light were coherent, a flashlight could cut right through the floor. A thousand watts or a kilowatt of laser power will melt right through several inches of steel. Multiplying that 1,000 watts or kilowatt by 1,000, a laser would produce a million watts or a megawatt, 10 with six zeros. That's the peak mechanical power output of a diesel locomotive at high speed contained in just a beam of light. It's also the swimming power of a blue whale. These megawatt lasers rely on high energy, sometimes very dangerous chemical reactions to produce laser light. High power chemical lasers usually require massive infrastructure. They guzzle electricity and produce enough heat to melt down in seconds without enormous cooling systems. The Miracle, or Mid-Infrared Advanced Chemical Laser, is a directed energy weapon developed by the US Navy. It relies on a deuterium fluoride chemical reaction. It first became operational in 1980 and can produce over a megawatt of output for up to one minute before overheating. The Miracle's original intended application was to enable the military to track and destroy fast-moving missiles. With 1,000 times that power, a gigawatt, a laser can create sufficient heat in a target to trigger nuclear fusion. The Argus and Shiva lasers were built at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California to do just that. The Shiva was a 20-beam neodymium glass laser built at Livermore in 1977 for the study of confined nuclear fusion. The device was named after the multi-armed form of the Hindu god Shiva. A gigawatt, or a billion watts, is almost beyond imagination. At this level of power, the materials in the optics can't contain the intensity of light and begin to melt, vaporize, and break down. It becomes very difficult to even hold on to and guide light with so much energy. It's hard to think of scientists and engineers getting more ambitious than that. Besides, what could a laser that powerful be used for? For slicing reality itself in half? Take a gigawatt or a billion watts and multiply that by a thousand. Then multiply that number by another thousand and get to the current state of the art of high powered lasers. 10 with 15 zeros or a petawatt. That's a good portion of the total solar power of all the sunlight that reaches Earth, concentrated into just a few inches. How does a narrow beam of light get this powerful? To generate petawatts, it takes several powerful lasers working in harmony to feed into a single beam. This still won't get you all the way to a petawatt. Then, it takes a clever trick, something called chirped pulse amplification. The idea is to take waves of light and using complex optics, constrict or squeeze them in time, confine the electromagnetic ripple to a tighter and tighter space, and as a result, magnify its intensity. The world record, grandmother and granddaddy of lasers, is part of an international European effort, and it's kept in a lab in Romania. This beast uses chirped pulse amplification and can fire at 10 petawatts. These lasers produce conditions way more intense than the most destructive thermonuclear weapons. Light brighter and hotter than inside the sun. A thought one might have is, what does anyone need with a petawatt of power? What could anyone use a laser like that for? Well, at this point, scientists and engineers are very much in the same place they were when the laser was first invented in 1960. They're imagining and waiting for what the reality-bending petawatt era will yield. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.